Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're talking about the Square D M4 pressure switch. And what's nice about the Square D M4 pressure switch is it has this uh, fancy little arm on it. And uh, that might be different than the pressure switch that you're familiar with. So the idea behind this pressure switch is that it's going to protect your pump or your motor um, anytime that there's a, a situation where there's a sudden drop in pressure. Now to be more specific, this pressure switch is designed to drop out when the pressure reaches 10 pounds below the pump's cut on pressure. So in the instance of this switch when it's fresh out of the box, it's preset to 30, 50 psi. Again, meaning that the pump kicks on at 30 psi and shuts off at 50 psi. So if suddenly this pressure switch encountered 20 PSI, this little arm is gonna do that number um, and basically your, your, your switch is no longer going to, uh, or your pump's no longer gonna operate until you come out here. And it actually doesn't trip up all the way. This is the, so there's three positions and it's labeled on this. So you've got three positions. You've got uh, auto, start, and off. And what it does in auto is it kind of just stays down all the way, um, kind of suspended almost, Sus there's some resistance here. So it stays kind of suspended between auto and start is the best way that I can kind of put it. And we're gonna show it in just a second. Um, so the idea is that if there's a sudden drop in water pressure, this arm is gonna sense that and disable the pump. The downside with these pressure switches is that you have to manually go out and hold this lever until, uh, until it builds up enough pressure for the pump to keep that lever open and, and allow normal system operation. Um, but the upside is that these are super inexpensive. So like somewhere in the ballpark of $20, you're able to protect your system. And these are very important or uh, a very good value, let's say, in situations where you very infrequently um, run out of water in your well or you infrequently experience these types of issues, because uh, then you're not gonna have to go out and reset this on a regular basis. If you're in a situation where your well runs dry all the time, you might consider going with electronic motor protection, which is gonna cost you more, um, but it doesn't require that manual reset. It's just gonna automatically restart after a period of time. But that's enough about that. We're, we've covered that in another video and I'm sure we'll cover it again in the future. If you have questions on automatic pump protection, get with us in customer service and we'll, we'll help you out. Anyways, uh, so back to the pressure switch. So we're gonna show you um, how it operates and kind of do a little simulation of a loss in pressure on the system. So we've got a pump plumbed up here and we're gonna run some water through it and you're gonna see normal operation. And then what you're gonna see is we're gonna open a valve essentially cutting off the suction. So we're gonna lose prime on this pump. That's gonna simulate uh, a dry well. We're gonna no longer have a water available to get in the pump. And this is gonna stop that from happening and then we'll show you how to restart. So let's get, get started on that. Okay, so for the first test, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a valve that's gonna allow the water to flow through the pump system and uh, we'll just see this switch engage the pump and then I'll shut the valve and then we'll see the switch shut the pump off and then we'll lose suction in just a moment. Now we're closing the valve and we've successfully completed the pump cycle. So now let's say I'm gonna open a valve over here and let's say that um, the uh, system lost prime or the well ran out of water. You can hear that water running out. And hopefully that'll be enough to cause this thing some grief. We finally got the pump to lose all of its prime. Um, as we can see, we're at dead zero um, and this pump is not calling for water. We've still got energy uh, going to the pressure switch. Um, so it's just a matter of pulling this lever once we have this pump primed up and we'll spare you the priming process, but basically we're just gonna fill this volute with water and then uh, I'll show you how this little lever is gonna react once we do that. Um, I guess I can just show you right now, w when you pull this lever up, you engage the pump. And you don't wanna pull it all the way up because that just opens the switch. 
So it's a matter of holding it in place until the pump is primed. Now, I could hold this all day with the volute empty and just burn the pump up. So what we need to do is prime that pump real quick. Okay, so we've got the pump reprimed. We're ready to uh, engage this pressure switch again and start getting the system back up and running. Now, when you've got to hold this lever, it, it can sometimes be a little hard on your fingers. Um, so just using something simple like a nut driver to hold it in place gives you a little leverage and makes it a whole lot easier. So let's see if we can get this thing primed back up. Close it. Yeah, open it again. I've got uh, Jeremy over there opening and closing the valve on the discharge so we can get this fully primed. All right, I'm no longer having to hold it. And we should be primed. I don't hear any water or air now. So, all right, we got that thing fully primed back up again. Um, this particular pump that we're using is uh, an irrigation type of pump. It's just one that we happen to have here that we could use for this. So it, we kind of have to monkey with the valves more just because of the high flow rates of this pump. But anyways, you got to kind of see the idea. So this switch, as you can see now, I mean, there's just no resistance on it. Um, as you hold it there long enough, it kind of, um, the resistance just goes off of it once it gets to the right point. And that's why I say it kind of just floats in place. In the beginning of this video, I kind of just mentioned that it just floats in place. Um, so it's not really in the auto position and it's not really in the start position. It just kind of sits there. Um, but that's how you know that it's, it's working and it's engaged. And, and regardless of if your system loses prime or um, you have a pipe burst, I mean, ultimately, if your system loses prime, this is when this is gonna kick in. But it's regardless of if a pipe bursts or you run out of water in the well, it's a good level of protection for a very low price tag. So there's a question that I saw um, recently on another video where somebody kind of talked about the M4 pressure switch. And the, the question was, let me just grab this here. Um, under what circumstance would the switch become a nuisance? Because in that video, they mentioned that you don't want to use one of these switches on a standard system uh, because you can get nuisance trips. Um, so, with the so uh, i'll finish the question here under what circumstance would the switch become a nuisance if water supply was good and pressure would not be expected to drop below 10 psi below the cut in pressure then how would this aspect be noticed and that's actually a great question um, and i don't think it was answered in that, that other video uh, but the answer basically is that if the pressure never drops this switch is just a normal pressure switch uh, there's not really any circumstance that's going to cause false tripping. Uh, the only real thing that could possibly happen that I could see maybe, and I haven't tested this, and so maybe we could test this here, is if you've got a pump that does a lot of volume and you've got a small pressure tank, if you suddenly open up all your taps and that pump is just firing on all cylinders, you could potentially have enough pressure loss before the pump kicks on. And I think that the pump's distance from the pressure switch may play a role in these scenarios. Um, then it could have that sudden drop in pressure and cause the switch to trip out on you. Um, I think that's kind of unlikely when you kind of saw how difficult it was for me to just get this pump completely um, unprimed or to, to make this pump lose its prime. Um, so I, I would wager that this, this pressure switch by all accounts is gonna give you the same performance of a standard pressure switch with the added benefit of being able to protect your pump and motor from low pressure cutoff or from low pressure situations where it could potentially damage it. So uh, enough said on that. Thanks for joining us. Let's get some more questions in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. We will see you next time.